Good evening, everyone. I'm Elizabeth George, Chief Membership Officer with the American Guild of Organists. And I'm really excited about uh, this webinar, which I hope is really an open forum and an opportunity for you to comment, share uh, pain points, uh, where you need help. We thank you so much to those that, uh, that filled out the survey. And in a little bit, we're gonna share those results with you. And this is being recorded and we will probably send it out within the next 48 hours. But please do raise your hand, uh, post questions in the Q&A. If you wanna add comments in the chat, we're, we're gonna be monitoring that. So um, I wanna just share before I introduce our presenters, how this came about. I presented, we presented a webinar in uh, January about building a leadership pipeline to help succession planning. And we talked about um, creating micro volunteer opportunities for people to get involved, which would hopefully then make them more interested in perhaps stepping up into leadership. And Nancy Vanderlee, who is here uh, with us, who is the secretary of the Central Hudson Valley chapter, sent me a really great email that said, you know, that's all well and good. But for some of us, we can't even find the micro volunteer, the people that will micro volunteer. And that sparked a conversation uh, between Felicia and myself. And uh, you are uh, you're part of the AGO, all of you. We respect everyone's leadership and what you do to help us stay vibrant and sustainable. So uh, with me tonight, I do have Nancy Vanderlee, Secretary of the Central Hudson Chapter, and Felicia Ross, who is Manager of Member Engagement and Chapter Support. And Felicia, why don't you share some of what the findings were in the survey that we uh, received, those who responded. Sure, so you should see my, there we go, screen just popped up. So here are the results from our survey. We had 82 people respond to what size is your chapter. Now I recognize some of these responses may be about how many people feel like in your chapter or how many people are really involved in your chapter. Right here, we see uh, about 62% of you said between 26 and 50 members. We have 29.3% at under 25 and 8.5 at under 12. Uh, our next question here, how long have you been serving as a chapter officer? Now, I think the responses here were a bit surprising to us because we expected more from that 10 plus segment. But it's actually pretty even between uh, 10, 10 plus years at 35.4% and two to four years at 39%. And then we have uh, the five to 10 year um, section coming in at 25.6%. How often are your are small chapters hosting events? Well, pretty frequently, actually. We've got 35% um, doing three to four a year. We've got 26.8% coming in every other month. That's great. And 31.7% once a month and um, just one answer, five, five, six point one percent. Five people said one per year. Um, so that that covers our uh, like hard data questions. We also asked quite a, um, we asked some open ended questions. Let's stop sharing. We also asked some open ended questions about what are the things you're most concerned with as a chapter leader. Um, and some of our big themes here are viability of continuing leadership, the difficulty, like like Elizabeth just said, the difficulty in finding people to lead your chapters. Um, the vast majority of your members are older and don't want to volunteer. Um, the, the next kind of big pain point is in programming. Um, younger members are more interested in technology. Some of the older members only want to attend recitals and pipe organs. So there's some conflict in, in what's desired by your members, which can be felt a little bit stronger in a smaller chapter. And then kind of the last thing, everyone says we need more members. Um, and we did get a comment that I wish the national AGO would make it easier for small chapters to communicate with other nearby chapters. Well, you can always contact us at headquarters to get in touch with any of the chapters nearby. We also have a contact the Dean form at the bottom of our um, homepage. You can reach out to any other chapter leader there. You can also approach your regional counselor. Um, your regional counselors in their section of chapter administration, they have contact information for all the deans in their region. So you can always just uh, contact headquarters for that as well. So those were kind of the big topics that came in in that survey. And I, I will say that uh, once we have our new website, uh, we're going to have a password protected chapter officer area. So where, where you'll be able to upload newsletters, we can have contacts listed. 
it's just uh, now aside, just about anybody can can get onto our website and we don't want to post emails addresses. We did this a couple of years ago and it really isn't a, a, a good, safe thing to do. So unfortunately, until we get our website up and running, um, we, uh, you know, you, you can call us or call your regional counselor and say, can you print me out a list of, of chapters in my region and contacts? Um, uh, another point that uh, you, many of you stressed was arranging events and getting poor attendance. Uh, re getting organists who have had no formal training to attend programs. Some feel not worthy enough. And I feel so badly. I've heard this a lot. We have heard this a lot. And that's why I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to uh, attend any of J.W. Arnold uh, weekend organist uh, webinars, because these are targeted. 60% of our members are substitute or part-time organists that may not have had formal training. And yet so many of these people who you see as your chapter members are intimidated uh, to, to join. And uh, we don't want to uh, present a sense of elitism at all. That's not the intent of this association. And it's just finding a way to communicate with them and say, hey, come, just be part of the conversation. Um, officer training, there's little guidance on how to run a chapter, which can help and hurt a chapter, how a chapter functions and reach its audience. It would be helpful for deans and sub deans to attend leadership oriented professional development to assist in this process. Well, we have quite a bit of resources for you. We've done several webinars on leadership training based on roles and responsibilities. And we have scheduled in the month of May, each Monday, with the exception of Labor Memorial Day, uh, chapter officer training. And we are going to require that people sign off on having attended this. And we're also going to reference a great resource that is called the Board Team Handbook. And, um, you know, in a little bit, what I will do is I want to see if I can screen share where some of these resources are because... They're there. I know our, our website at the moment kind of looks like, where's Waldo? But uh, we can guide you there very easily. Uh, and so you will feel that you do have resources because we've put quite a, quite a few together for you. So we have a question here. Uh, you mentioned a survey. Mem many members in our chapters do not get the survey. I'm so sorry because we pulled every officer list. And uh, interestingly enough, we have 95, in case you didn't know this, extra small chapters with under 25 members and 71 are what we call small 25 to 50 members. And I know Felicia pulled a, a great Excel spreadsheet that was uploaded and sent out. So I'm very sorry to those of you who did not receive it. Um, I have been uh, remiss in not checking my uh, junk folder and uh, I have also started doing it religiously every day because believe it or not, some AGO communications have been found in there. So if you, you might wanna just check your, your junk folder, your spam folder to see if some of that might've ended up there. So I wanna open this conversation uh, because you shared a, a lot of common issues and uh, we wanna help you with this. So please, I'm sure there must be, we have 27 participants on now. I'm sure there must be some of you that really wanna talk about one particular thing that you feel could help your chapter more or that frustrates you about uh, your chapter. I'm just gonna jump in. We have another question in the chat okay. from Stephen Giddens. Is it required to have a sub dean according to our bylaws operating procedure? We must. Well, revise your bylaws and operating procedures because AGOHQ does not say you need to have one. All you need to have is your, your dean, your secretary and treasurer. Everything else is gravy. And Steve, it was so nice to meet you at the tri-chapter recital on Sunday afternoon. And I'm so glad that you, you could attend. Um, yeah, you know, um, our bylaws, as Felicia said, you need to have a secretary, a treasurer, and a dean now. 
if you want to have um, a subdean, it can be helpful or someone who can be an education coordinator to help plan events. I think it's great. Um, Nancy, you said that just about everybody that's on your board jumps in to help plan events. Do you want to elaborate yeah. on that a little bit? Yeah. Well, I must say, I thought about that later after I said that actually our, our dean, who was our sub dean, but then uh, stepped into the dean position when our, our dean had to leave the area, she still ends up spearheading most of it. Um, she's the one who comes up with the ideas um, first, usually, but then we jump in and help. But I'm I'm afraid that she still bears the big load of everything. Um, and but actually, she did that when she was sub dean as well, <laughs> when we had a couple other different deans. So um, she's just very talented, and I think we just lean on her. Although many of us, you know, we offer our support and try to take the load off her, but I'm not so certain if we always uh, do that as much as we should. Did you want to share some other thoughts? I know you said you had some some things that you thought were important, or do you want to wait and see how the conversation goes up to you? Um, well, I guess uh, the thing I, I had mentioned to you when we had a little meeting last week, um, that I, I think um, we have to shift our focus sometimes to outside of the church music world and reach out to uh, uh, public school music educators. Uh, I'm a retired public school music educator and I'm sure there are many other people who are or are still involved. But um, we, since children go, don't go to church or take piano lessons as much as they used to, I, I feel that we have to reach in through the schools and. And one way, well, in our um, area, we do have a very fine digital organ um, in our school, in our high school, which is not used sometimes as much as we'd like it to be. But um, it is a we've had programs where we um, the some of the kids take lessons, and there there's an awareness. Um, and we've had, and this is with a, the um, chapter of um, ATOS, uh, the New York chapter of ATOS. NATOs. Mm -hmm. um, so we collaborate with them in these education things. But uh, I just think more and more, we just have to realize that uh, it, you know, re just reaching within the, the church world isn't going to do it anymore. Um, and, you know, you, you really have to get involved, somehow get in through the back door of the schools one way or the other um, to even educate music educators who Many music teachers don't know the difference between an electronic organ and a pipe organ. In fact, I uh, work, I teach at a, just as a contractor at a boarding school nearby, and there was an, uh, an issue with the organ blower being too loud um, because they have it situated in a classroom space in the basement of the chapel. So they said, the organ can't be played during the day, can't be. Uh, but, but actually one of the music teachers thought that the organ blower was running all the time, not just when someone was actually playing it. <laughs> so they, we, uh, yeah. we, somebody has a question for you, Nancy. Jane Ott um, wanted to know how large your chapter is. Uh, we have, I think it's maybe just over 50. I could be wrong. Um, I'm, I'm not the membership chairperson, but I, th I think it's somewhere in the low 50s, something like that. And I saw Linda raised your hand. Um, let me see, is it in the chat? Uh, it's in the participants tab. We can allow Linda to talk live. So oh, Linda, yeah, that'd be good. yeah. All right, Linda, get ready to answer, ask your question live. Here we go. You just All right, I think you gotta, yourself. yeah, you gotta unmute yourself. There you go. Oh, do we have you, Linda? You can talk. Can you hear me? Yes. yes, now we can. Sorry. Um, I wanted to throw out a, a couple of thoughts and maybe get some responses. We have between 45 and 50 on the roll members or dual members. And when we have a meeting like we did at our Epiphany dinner, we may get 10 to 12 active people. 
And the thread that ties those two together is our program chair. I have observed that a good number of our members have different tastes in what they want to see as a program and will be selective. Our best success has been in opening up certain special programs to audiences in the church community and the general public. Um, and we've gotten a good name by tying ourselves with the local homeless shelter in the winter. And this, we do um, a progressive dinner where we have themes like women composers, local composers, um, our Christmas recitals, but we alternate it with the um, more um, meaty program titles that will appeal just to the professional or semi-professional in the group. And I wonder how many of the small chapters incorporate groups, programs that reach out to the general public and how they go about marketing those programs to get people in the community interested in what we do. See if we have some responses here. And Linda, you are Dean of the Winchester chapter. That is correct. That is correct. Um, I know I wrote about in a newsletter a couple of years ago, a wonderful, wonderful, was it at Christmas time where you, you had a play, you had a murder mystery? It was October and um, we got to, <laughs> Um, my program chair is Marilyn Schenenberger, and between she and I, we get kind of wickedly naughty with things. So for uh, October's program, we wrote um, a play about the missing C note on the organ in the chapel. And we had everybody who was a member, a regular active member, have a role. We, we probably had close to 40 people there. And I was the detective that had to sleuth out the um, the program. And what happened in the end, every what happened in the end is our oldest, most venerable professor emeritus, Dr. Stephen Cookies, he fell asleep in the basement and was leaning up against the pipes and it ciphered on a C. <laughs> and then and then we sang, Marilyn wrote some um different words and text to some songs that people knew and everybody got involved in it and we, it was it was a, a hoot it took a lot of effort but it was it was a lot of fun and i wrote a um a play for epiphany and we filmed it with three of the oldest chapter male members who played the three wise men Ooh. and used traditional christmas carols to tell the story from the point of view of the wise men so we step out of the box quite a bit. I think, I, you know, uh, what I have heard, well, first of all, I want to dispel a myth that you have to have a program every month. You don't. For some of you, it is so hard to produce it. Uh, just as Linda said, if you can provide some opportunities for networking, uh, I believe they're as important as any recital or workshop that you could produce. If you can, as, as Nancy said, collaborate with arts organizations or even outreach in the community that raises your brand, which I know Linda, you do so beautifully. And it just, um, it, it, it helps you. I think collaborating, I know some chapters have collaborated together um, but you don't have to. And, and I, I'll tell you, the National Council had a long discussion about this because you are on their minds. They are very, very concerned about what they can do and how we can help you so that you don't feel so stressed and so burdened. So if you did four programs a year, and maybe one was a collaboration with, with another organization or with a, a, another community, and then, you know, make sure that at least one of those is just purely networking, because I think your members want to get together and talk. I, I'd like to know, let me see, you have some more questions down here. Um, okay, Lynn Emmons, 
Our chapter has 16 members. There are five to seven members who we never see the whole year at any of our events. We have eight to 10 members who are very dedicated, but our problem is the same five to seven seem to be the ones who rotate through the officer positions. So we have some burnout as a result of that. Not many others care to be seriously involved. Do you have any ideas as how you can avert this burnout? Well, we talked about that today. Um, and uh, we are gonna be formulating some actually other models beyond chapters. We don't want to close chapters, but um, that we will be presenting to the National Council when they meet next week in Atlanta. Because we've been researching other associations who have units and groups and um, just get together. A lot of it is online. Um, doing some virtual online communities. Uh, and I know that doesn't take the place of face-to-face -face connection, but I'm just curious, how, how many can, has anybody done any, any virtual meetings? And I, I'm not talking about just during COVID, but after COVID. Take a look here. Okay, well, I'm gonna continue. Hi, Jens. Uh, I love Jens. Jens is, is uh, with our Waco chapter. I thought programs are always open and should appeal to the general public as well as organists, or at least concerts. Absolutely, they should. They should. And, um, you know, there's one way to do it is, um, and I forget which chapter had great success. If your local newspaper has someone that... Um, uh, does a column, it might be on a Saturday, of arts and events around town. Get to know that person. If you need to know how to write a press release, we can help you with that. But cultivate that person, invite them to, uh, to a program, and absolutely uh, invite um, members of your church. Make this known. Use, if you haven't used social media, you know, we have some wonderful resources. J.W. Arnold has presented some ideas on, on social media to grow your chapter. Um, Felicia, what were you going to say to Jens? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Um, I just want to suggest, you know, go work smarter, not harder. Find people who will promote for you. So go, go look at your local library. It always has flyers up for local events. Go find those other people in your community who want to promote you and promote what you offer. Um, homeschooling groups, always looking for people, always looking for content for kids. Um, so, so do think outside the box and go look around your community and see who else is involved and go talk to them. Good point. Carla Seidel. Well, I, I have quite fondness for your, for your uh, chapter in Reading, PA. Uh, I'm secretary in the Reading chapter, which is a small chapter. We just had a Petals, Pipes, and Pizza event this past weekend. We had 10 children ages 5 plus and 20 adults attending. We also had an Orgel Kids and an Organ Builder attend. It was a wonderful event. We had hoped for more children to attend and advertise, but had conflicts with sports and other activities. Yeah, that's always a problem is these kids are booked so much with, with outside activities. We're trying. The adults that attended these events were thrilled with it and told us multiple times that they enjoyed it. While we were disappointed that more children didn't attend, we realized that it was just as great having adults enjoy the program too. Now, Carla is very fortunate because we have a member located in that area named Vincent Ryan, who has done more to promote the Orgel Kids and has produced events in libraries he is such a great supporter. We can uh, put his, uh, I'll find his website and I'll put it in, in, the, uh, in the chat. But, uh, you know, we, and we've created resources now for people who are considering buying an Orgel, kid, kid, Orgel Kids kit or have them. And um, even taking them into adult communities for adult education learning. So um, don't get dismayed. I think if people are engaged, that's the Important thing, ah, Stephen Giddens, all our meetings are on Zoom. Very interesting, very interesting. Okay, since COVID, we've held our meetings in person, Carla, gotcha. Um, did I miss anything else? Um, 
Well, you have this, to go back to Lynn, you know, you've got 16 members. That's tough. And you're going to have, and they're five to seven that you never see the whole year at your events. Um, and you're rotating officers positions. If we, if we required less of you regarding governance, would that help? And we don't want to take any leadership uh, 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 effectiveness from the, away from you. But I seem to hear that treasurers are often very difficult to find, as well as deans in chapters. And I'm just wondering if, I'd love to hear some comments about if you weren't required to, um, to have a, a abide by all of the AG bylaws and could have less governance, meet when you want, um, not stress uh, for getting, finding people to run on a slate and ending up recycling, as you said, members. Would that be something that would interest you? Take a look at some other comments here. Anybody that wants to raise their hand? Uh, let me look in the chat. Okay. No, Linda, nothing there. Linda has her hands up again. We're going to bring okay. Linda back up. Here we go. Yeah. Linda. All right. You just have to unmute Linda and you're all set. I just like to share a thought. We have, I, in my opinion, over the course of about six or seven years, outgrown our expectations for what should be our small chapter identity to a more medium chapter identity because we have these large programs where a lot of the public come. And I got the board to support two things that I think are really going to streamline and bring us into the 21st century. The first is when we ask for donations or we've had several ticket events, I've found and researched and found um, a business that we like that helps us take tickets online and saves the money and does the formatting for us and gives us a, a report. And that just takes all the cash, the checks out of somebody's individual hand and puts it into a more professional venue that structures all our fundraising. And it has a place for donations if somebody wants to give you donations. And the second thing is to um, rent from our local post office a very small, the smallest post office box so that checks and information are not just being sent through the mail at a variety of, of different officers. Those two things I think are going to be efficient in helping us relieve some of that small chapter um, responsibility of collecting money and paying bills, et cetera. So I just throw yeah. that out for what it's worth. I think that's great. Are, are they doing this pro bono or are you paying them? Everything's pro bono. Wow, that's wonderful. That's well, really great. what we've gotten out of it is some really, really good friendships and cross, cross relating. Like we'll have instrumentalists, we have vocalists, we have choral directors in addition to organists. And um, the the thing that has tied the knot is that when we have a social event like our epiphany dinner. We go and invite everybody who's performed at one of our programs or for us who are not chapter members, but ask them to come to certain events as a gift, as a thank you gift. So they see themselves as sort of adjunct WAGO members, which I think is kind of cool. I think that's a great idea. You know, uh, I, I forget who I was having a discussion with, but there are, and, and I'd, I'd love to know, uh, some chapters are very protective of their newsletter. They feel, and I'm sorry if you're hearing my dog barking in the background. Daddy must not be nearby. Um, some 
chapters just don't want to. They feel that this is a benefit. You know, our newsletter is a benefit, one of the benefits of being a member of our chapter. And we'll have it up on their website, but it's password protected. I just like to throw out the idea that if you open it up to non-members, it's a recruitment opportunity. And it's it's a way to engage, um, you know, people that you wouldn't normally perhaps, you might because they, they are frustrated, they can't get in, they, they want some information. So I I think that, you know, you should, my two cents, I think it'd be great uh, to not password protect your newsletters and to share them, particularly with other organizations in your community that you think might be interested with this. You have any other hands raised? Uh, let me see here. Ah, uh, Deborah Labrune has asked if you can Share the name of the ticket agency you're using. Linda, I don't know if you want to do that, if you feel that that would be um, counterproductive. I think you also have to realize that this is a, this is a, the sponsor is, uh, or the person that's helping, or the company that's helping is located in her area. Am I not correct, Linda? So there's a, a connection well there. What I can share with you is that we had several people try over the course of several years, different businesses. And um, I synthesize those upon recommendation of who has experienced um, those companies, even outside of the, the AGO chapters. And then I picked three of them and wrote a sort of a chart as to what was the quick Turn around. The the big thing for me is: Do they offer uh, uh, consumer support? Is there somebody that I can call if I get in a pinch and help me? And um, from that, we had three. And then um, I just said we're going to do. I just chose the one that I wanted because of the services that it offered. And um, perhaps Elizabeth, I can share that with you. And if you feel that somebody wants to hear the the name of the group that I use, they can reach out through you maybe. Okay, that's that's great. Yeah, I mean, I think just such a brilliant idea. And and you are, Winchester, I was trying to figure out when I was gonna do a road trip and do Potomac and um, uh, District of Columbia and then get over to you, you're, you're, you're a little farther out there. So you're not as close. We're, we're about, 80 mi 70 miles from the center of district of columbia and we are the 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 neighbor to a huge area called the tri-state area which is potomac maryland um northern virginia and the washington dc chapter and you'd think that we wouldn't have anything in common but um ronald butts bomer who is the dean of the Northern Virginia chapter met me. We met each other at the Quimby Artist, Young Artist Local Competition. And he reached out to me by wanting to do some joint small chapter, large chapter uh, programs. And this happened last year in the October meeting. We had a members recital with an Oktoberfest dinner. And then this spring, we sponsored a new young artist on the keg organ at Christendom College, which is in Front Royal, which is in our district. And we we got, I bet we got about 70 people in both of those combined chapters for these two events. And it was a great collegial experience. Um, the The chapter, the chapters cover those 80 miles. It's a lot, if you, you have to want to drive, but it was a cool experience. And the people that got the most out of it were I think the two deans, cause we shared a lot of ideas and supported each other with like, who's going to do the program and who's going to call this. So that, I just thought that was a, a rich addition to our program this, this past year. And it didn't lay the burden just on us to do it, but yes, we're over in the Valley. Well, I, I, collaboration is key. And if you've got someone else who can shoulder some of those responsibilities, I think that's great. And I know that was a program that I wanted to come to and I just couldn't figure out how to get there because I think I was on the opposite side of the country. Um, let's see, we've got a couple more comments here. 
Um, we applied for Thrivent Action Team Funds to pay for the pizza for our Petals, Pipes and Pizza. With it being an educational event, it was approved. This was very helpful with the cost. That's interesting. Um, uh, oh, well, Steve, good for you. Uh, planning events has not been a problem for our chapter. I've already booked, I've booked most for the next year. Well, <laughs> problem is we have members attending events. Well, that 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 is a problem. And um, I know that maybe you need to mix up the time that you do it, the day that you do it, uh, if that would make a difference. Um, do you, you, uh, you know, do a lot of you use social media to promote, how, you know, your Facebook page? Be interesting to know how many of you do that. Um, let's see, do we have any other comments in the chat? Take a look. Okay, not. Alicia, anything you want to add? Uh, I think we have one more question from Jane Ott down in the bottom here. Have other chapters had success in creating adjunct groups? We have one group that helps with refreshment slash reception. They are all people related to AGO members. Um, well, first, I do want to point out that you don't have to be an organist to be a full member of the AGO. You just have to like the organ. So they don't really need to be an adjunct group with their own set of governance and, you know, all the all the separate um, administrative issues that another group would would come cause and bring up so um you can always have them as part of your chapter they don't have to play absolutely uh, we've got uh, several i don't know what the percentage is but we have a lot of members that are just organ enthusiasts who just love the organ i, I can remember speaking with one woman who says she hasn't missed except for during covid when atlanta convention was uh canceled she hasn't missed one national convention because she loves just hearing the music so much. Um, an interesting thing, and this was a few years ago, I was asked to go out to the Sacramento chapter uh, and do some strategic planning with them. And uh, they have since merged with the North Valley chapter and now the strategic, what are they, uh, the Sacramento Valley chapter. But I also attended a program of theirs where they had brought a very well-known, and I can't remember his name, French organist over. And uh, it, it was a lovely performance and they had a pretty good attendance. And then we went into the strategic planning session the next day talking about alliances, forming alliances uh, that are, are not maybe music related and they, suddenly light bulbs went up and they said, oh my Lord, we have this French Institute in town. Wouldn't it have been great? We featured a French organist to invite them. So I really do think it's it's looking as, as Linda has, uh, look beyond the walls of your chapters. Who else is out there in that area? And, and don't feel like you need to do a program every month and do some virtual Zoom, just chat if you want meetings or meet for happy hour or coffee. Don't put this burden on you uh, unless you really, really feel that it is a benefit to your members. Um, that's just my two cents. Felicia, Nancy, anything you would want to comment on? Oh, Johannes has his, ah, I wonder who he might be. <laughs> All right, Johannes, here you come. There we go. Did that work? You just have to unmute yourself. No? I think he's dialing in. That may be. Uh, yeah. Let's try. That's odd. I can get him yeah. to come on my screen. Yeah. Here, let's. Oh, you know what? I think my um thing scrolled when I was trying to click, and I clicked the wrong person. Sorry, whoever is on the phone. Here's Johannes. All right. Yep. And you're unmuted. You're good to go, Johanna. Can you hear us? Nope. Okay. Well, I'm I sorry. That's my husband. Let me get, I could get him on my screen, maybe. Hold on. Oh, wait. You don't want him on screen, though. Forget well, it. it doesn't matter. Yeah. The more the merrier. 
Okay. I was let about me to bring my dog on the screen if she hadn't stopped barking. So <laughs> yeah, let me just mute myself. It's the beauty of, of, of Zoom webinars. You never know what's going to happen. Um trying to think if there are any other comments down here that we haven't addressed. So what, Steve, when you were saying you do all your meeting, you were talking about your board meetings, but I was talking about, has anybody done any education programs or networking programs uh, virtually? Because for those who maybe can't drive at night, um, this might be a, a, an option. I love it. We're getting to see Nancy's Nancy's house. We're getting a tour of her house. Yeah. Okay. Right. Here we are. <laughs> yeah. Actually, okay. Uh, I, I, there's, there's another member here. Okay. There's, there's well, we, we don't need them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. That's okay. a temporary AGO member. Yeah. yeah. Hi, uh, Johannes. Yeah, what did hi. you say? It's uh, John for short, really. Okay. Okay, what I was going to say was um, about outreach to other organizations, and I don't know how much Nancy told you about it, but um, I've been with the New York Theater Organ Society since the 1980s, and I ran as its, ch I was a, its chair for, what, seven years? And I just stepped down. As but I mean, one of our most successful programs with the AGO together is a program that we call Bach to Broadway. And it came about because um, I met a young organist who had a great sense of humor. He's a theater organist. And um, uh, also we have a classical organist in our um, uh, chapter who is just amazing. And um, he's sort of reserved. And I wondered if, if you put the two of them together, what, what the effect would be. And that ha that's how we came up with the Bach to Broadway program. Thanks to the digital technology, we were able to put a um, a theater organ uh, in in the church, and we have these two organists at times battling it out, and it's been one of the most successful programs we've had, because because the music ranges anywhere from Bach to Queen, and so you can invite <laughs> the general public in. And yeah, you know they recognize a lot of the the music, and uh, um, uh, um, every year we you know, we pick a theme. Um, we've done animals. We've done what? Well, autumn one time, and uh, and um, we also got students involved. In yes. That. Yeah. Yes. High school students. Yeah, right. High school students involved, and just um, well, one time we had the two. Organists allegedly have an argument. They walked out, and we had a couple of piano <laughs> students. Uh, and it's um, uh, it's very successful. It's a program that people look forward to, and we can bring non-organ members into that, and they uh, they, they enjoy it too. So um, it's just an idea. I mean, there is a lot of theater organ people out there who like any kind of organ. So, you know, reach out to them. I mean, we're, uh, our organization is having the same problems. Not enough people trying to get people in. And But you're also on our board, on the AGO. Board. Yeah, okay. I, did. <laughs> I don't know why. But um, no, I mean, I'm on the AGO board. That, that's a good point. If you, you know, you can go to the ATOS website and see if there is a chapter near you in, in your area. Exactly. <laughs> That's a great idea. I I want to know when you're planning the next one. I'm going to be there. <laughs> what? October 12th. <laughs> October 12th. Okay. It's gone, it's gone on my uh, on my calendar now. Uh, yeah. I think that's absolute. What fun. What fun. Yes. And and people in the community, as you said, come, you know, and if you're just, you're saying you're going to play uh, queen music and you're going to play Bach and whatever it is, I mean, it just... Um, it, it, it's amusing and, and it engages people. Uh, yes. Trying to see, I think we have a couple more comments. I got to move. Okay, go ahead. All right, I'll go with Okay. You. Well, nice right. to see you. Um, yeah. Okay, you were talking, Steve was saying he was talking about his board meetings as opposed to programs. Okay. Uh, well, I think we've got some great ideas here tonight. I would like to keep this conversation going and I wish we had our online community platform up and running. This is gonna be a collaborative platform that will um, 
uh, liaise with our website uh, and new database. And you, we, we're going to be forming groups of interest. Could be chapters by size. It could be people who love Bach. It could be people that uh, that teach uh, organ. Um, so I wish that we did have a platform now for you to talk to each other. We don't. But um, if you would like us to uh, schedule another webinar to continue the conversation, please let me know. And as well, um, the discussion doesn't stop here. Please email Felicia and I. Let us know if, if you've had ideas and maybe you were not sure about whether to share them tonight. Um, don't be don't be timid. Don't be afraid. We we respect you so. We thank you so much for your leadership. Uh, I always say it, it should not be, you know, a lifetime responsibility. So we we don't want you to feel like that. Uh, we appreciate your service, but at a certain point, you need to you need to be able to relax and and enjoy and let somebody else do the work. Um, Felicia, any other thoughts? Final thoughts? I just want you all to know you're all in good company. There are a lot of chapters in this boat and there are a lot of associations in the same boat as the AGO. So if there is something that comes up, do feel free to reach out to us and we can connect you with other chapters who are having similar issues. Great, great. Nancy, thank you so much for being part of the conversation tonight. We really appreciate you for kickstarting this whole discussion. Thank you for enabling all this. It's really <laughs> appreciated. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you all. I appreciate everybody that has participated and joined. Uh, as I said, we will uh, be uh, sending out this uh, recording probably tomorrow. And, um, oh, did we want to show, uh, let me see if I've got our website up here. I don't have our website up uh, to show where the resources are. I'd have to, let me see if I can get out of here real quickly. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay, all right. I uh, am going to share my screen just so that you can see where the resources are. So here we go. So um, actually, I'm going to let the slider go by. We have national volunteer coming 21st through the 27th. And if you click here, just you can put your name in and uh, we are going to be raffling off uh, uh, organ shoes to a uh, young organist, a regular organist and a special member. We've got a lot of new discounts that uh, we're trying to increase benefits. But I just want to share with you, if you go, we have a chapters tab right here. Um, so it's not that difficult to find and it takes you to leadership toolkits. And it also takes you to what I think was one of the best resources that we have created uh, is our chapter support, specialist support teams. And they can help you if you need help with marketing and communications, technology, programming, education, certification, membership, chapter leadership, financial development. It is very easy to get to them. And what you do is you just, as I said, there's the drop down menu. Chapter specialist support teams should come up. Okay. And uh, if you scroll down, you have an opportunity to put your name, your officer position, uh, you can select uh, what you would like help in and uh, please do in uh, include your phone simply because sometimes email addresses bounce back and then let us know what's on your mind and these come to me immediately and we have uh, volunteers that uh, usually respond within 24 hours so I just wanted to make sure that you knew that as well as where to find our our upcoming um webinars and recitals so that right under education oh well that wait a second here we go all right Let's see if it goes there okay well there you go here's our small chapters forum and we're going to have uh, a presentation by one license 
next Monday. And then of course we're having study groups for people that are preparing for certification. But then on the 29th, we will be having a presentation on Hauptwerk, who is offering a 15% discount to uh, new users. So we are trying to do as much as we can to increase the benefits and the ROI for you as members. So I'm just gonna end now by uh, saying thank you so much. We really appreciate your participation. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're here, we're anxious to help and we wanna hear more from you. So everybody take care, stay well, and uh, 